Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Martin Kenny. I'm a TD representing the Irish Parliament here today, and I'd just like to first of all thank the United Nations for organising this event. Uh, there's a couple of the, the, the targets, the Sustainable Development uh, Goals 14. One of them is target 14B, which is basically uh, prioritising or promoting small-scale artisan fisheries. And I'm very conscious that in Ireland we have a lot of offshore islands, and the people who live in those islands are small fishermen, and they're fishing to try and make a living. And one of the things that they constantly tell us is that they are so restricted by the quotas that have been put on them from the European Union, and yet they look out beyond into the sea and they see these huge super trawlers sucking up hundreds of tons of fish at a time. And it is extremely frustrating and annoying for people who live in small coastal communities who are trying to survive and to see this happening. And one of the things that I might suggest that we should look at is are we prepared as a world to ban the large capacity fishing vessels? Are we prepared to look at that? Because if we are not prepared to look at that, then we are not serious about this. Because really we have to find a balance, and the balance is between the overfishing which may occur and ensuring that small coastal communities can survive and flourish. The other target I'd like to look at is target 14.1, which is about preventing marine pollution of all kinds. Now, a lot of the marine pollution which we talk about is basically around sewage treatment and, I suppose, wastewater treatment and all of that. And in Ireland, as in many countries, because of the, the uh, I suppose, global recession, we have been restricted and we have had many, many years of austerity. And that has meant that our government, as many governments, are in a position where we have not been able to invest to the levels that we need to invest in our infrastructure to ensure that we can protect our waterways the way we need to. And if we are to, to do that, what we need is to ensure, because certainly in Ireland's case we had the, the ECB and we had the International Monetary Fund and the World Banks and all these other organisations which are global organisations placing these restrictions on our country which we, and leaving us in a position which we are unable to invest in these vital pieces of infrastructure. That is changing as we move out of the, out of the recession but it is something that I am sure is still hampering many countries around the world and it is something that globally we need to look at and reassess. And in relation to that I suppose one of the other things that comes, into, comes to mind there is that if we do not have the money to, to invest in these things because of austerity, the other thing that we see in the world is that the wealth of the the world is in fewer hands and we see that what was happening is that there is I suppose a free movement of untaxed capital by international corporations and something needs to be done to ensure that is taxed and that that wealth is used for to protect our oceans and protect our people. Um, the other impact I suppose that comes to mind in regard to all of this and has been mentioned early on by some of the speakers is in relation to the impact of mineral and gas exploration and particularly oil and gases and the, the, indeed the, the burning of fossil fuels and what that is doing to our oceans and the, the, the acidification of our oceans because of that. And one of the examples which Ireland has and I suppose is an example that I think we should bring to the world is at the moment in the Irish Parliament we're passing a bill to ban the extraction and exploration of oil and gas from shale rock and tight sands, which is traditionally known as fracking. And we're trying to ensure that this stops. Because if we crack the core of the earth, the shell of the earth, what happens is these oils and gases will leak into our waterways and into our water courses and end up on our seas and destroy our planet. And at the moment, even if we don't extract oil and gas, we are already at a stage where we cannot afford to continue burning fossil fuels. Finally, and I just want to finally say that uh, I, I'm aware that much of the work that has been done in regard to developing this particular sustainable, uh, sustainable Development Goal 14 was done by the Kenyan mission, in, uh, Kenyan mission to the UN and the Irish mission to the UN. And we're very proud that two countries from two ends of the world came together, both of whom I suppose in the past had a colonial past, and now they're coming together for to work for a better world and a better future. And we're very proud of the work that they have done, and I want to compliment our Kenyan colleagues here today in the work that they've done along with the Irish mission here for to make this develop, sustainable development happen. And really, I suppose, what we need to ensure is that we have now hoisted a flag aloft. And all of us, representing the parliaments of all parts of the world, now have an opportunity for to ensure that we keep that flag flying. That's what we need to do. And to do that, we need to take concrete action. We need to find the money to put into it to make those actions happen. And we need to have the, the, the ability for to ensure that legislation is passed in all of our parliaments which will make Sustainable Goal 14 not just an ambition but a reality. Thank you very much for your time. Gurumila Thank you. Uh, I think it